what does the next five years in your category look like? Because this is one of those things where if you didn't know, for example, if you don't think that there's a potential solution, you tend not to ask questions about it. But I have a feeling now that more, impe- like the way you're sharing it with us today on this podcast, I'm sure people that are in, because like, it's is it a facility manager's job? Is it a CEO's job? Whose job is this to make sure that indoor space is optimized, secured, and efficient? You know what I mean? Like, it's not really someone's job. You know what I mean? Give us an idea of what's going to happen, you think, in this category the next five years. Because you are right. There is a race to retain talent. That is that is happening. Like People are trying to figure out, how do I keep people that want to work for me? Because I can't be highest bidder game. The highest bidder game, there can only be one winner. <laughs> so, like, <you> can't. <laughs> so how do people win? It's a new category, right? And we're actually starting to see job titles for folks that are responsible for workplace experience. So that's that's like up and coming. But yeah, I mean, outside of those kind of leading companies, it's HR. Sometimes it's the facilities folks. Sometimes it's, you know, the COO. But really where we think this is going is, to me, it ultimately goes back to the experience. And, and so whether you're an employee or a visitor or the same product, the same technology, the same application, also our customers use to manage hybrid events, right? So think about, you know, we just did an event for, Aruba with 50,000 attendees in Vegas, and it was a mix of hybrid, right? So online and and in person. And so be, if you're in person, you're using the app and you're navigating through, you know, the conference rooms and the, and the trade show part, right? If you're online, you're switching from one session to the next, right? And, and you've got your own program, you know, again, creating that equity. So no matter whether you're remote or in person. So there's use cases that continue and continue and I think the technology and where we see the next step in this is we're bringing in augmented reality. We're bringing in AI. We're looking at how this plays in the metaverse. So if you think about augmented reality, let me start there. When you think about the maps, it's usually in 2D, right? We're now moving to 3D maps so that as you walk through a space, you can see what's really happening there. So if you hold up your phone with the camera, it's showing you what, what's really there And then on top of that layering, you could have an avatar or you could have points of interest things popping up, right? Telling you about what's in this space. Or if you're in a supermarket and you're looking at a wine bottle, it'll give you information about that wine, where it came from or what it goes well with, right? Or or what the pricing is. So depending on how you want to use it, we can layer in augmented reality and really, in some ways, whether it's an avatar or, or directional navigation information, right? Showing arrows, how do you get from point A to point B? Or... I think this is kind of cool, like x-ray vision, right? So like I was just in our Berlin office and they were showing me how walking through the phone and you put it at one of the doors in the hallway and it'll show you what's inside that room, right? So you can you can see, like you were saying earlier, like I need certain amenities and equipment for my session, right? So you can pull up and it'll show you everything that's in that room through, without even opening the door, right? Because it's all connected. That <laughs> before, is all before I ever get up and go that's... looking. Because that was the old way. You just it's go not... in and peek around like, oh, does it got it? <laughs> The next thing with this is also making it immersive, right? So that's where some of the hardware with glasses, right, come in and the metaverse comes in. So let's make it more immersive. So I'm not holding my phone. My hands are free. Maybe I've got glasses on. And now I can see the augmented reality and the location data that we capture is driving that experience as you're walking through these spaces. So if I'm walking through Las Vegas Convention Center at a trade show, it's going to pop up and say, hey, that booth, that company was on your list of companies to visit, right? And and here's the information. Or, you know, I meet somebody and it pulls up information about them or, or whatever it may be. Or it's helping me just do some simple navigation. But it's all integrated. And the, the maps that we're talking about as you move from 2D to 3D, essentially a digital twin of your physical space. That's what companies need to upload into the metaverse, right? If you're, for, from a business perspective, you want to create a digital twin of your physical space in the metaverse and then interact with your customers and partners there. You need us to come in and map your space. I'm telling you right now, I hope our lead sponsor, Salesforce, is listening to this because they are the proprietors of one of the biggest conferences around, right? Dreamforce. And I've been to a Dreamforce and like, it's multiple city blocks. I don't know if you've ever been. It's, it's multiple city blocks. It's held inside massive buildings, which also then requires me to like, I mean, just knowing where I'm supposed to be and how to get there, not quite that easy. It was definitely, it was always a challenge. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's no, a major challenge. <laughs> they're all like that, right? All of these big trade shows are like that. It's, it's difficult to navigate them. It's difficult to know where to go. And then the sponsors of these events 
are getting so much data as well, right? Because then you can understand traffic patterns. You can understand where yeah. do people spend more time. Do I need time? this much space? Like, I set up a wine bar over here. How much foot traffic went there? Exactly. Or, and safety reasons, right? So, you know, like, are you, you know, meeting all your protocols for fire regulations or things like that, right? So there's, there's a lot of different use cases for why you as a manager want that data, but it also helps your attendee or visitor have a better experience by providing this type of service. When I, was, when I attended reInvent, like I was like lost at all times. reInvent, for anyone who's ever been to reInvent, it's crazy. Have you ever been to AWS reInvent? No, I haven't. I've never seen so much help staff around. They have the, they wear these like giant flags because as you know, the inside of a casino is already designed to disorient you so that you're like not really sure where you're going. So you stay around, hopefully play some games or shop. So you're, they're inside of those massive casinos and they have all these people with flags physically get, like giving you guiding directions. They say like, come ask me. The way you're describing this and the way I see it is like, dude, it would have been tremendously convenient. If you're walking down the street, it's easy to tell someone to take a left on first, but it's very hard to explain where they should take a left inside of a building. There's no names to anything, right? So like, you, it's, it's, exactly. so like for me exactly. to walk and see that arrow be like, right now, take a left would be um, tremendously yeah. helpful, especially for a place like Vegas. As, as you, like we already said at the top of the conversation, dude, it's, it's already designed to, lose you <laughs> you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i mean i've been to ces mobile world congress it's all the same right yeah. it's just they're such big venues and so having that capability of navigating or being able to find your peers or colleagues or the company that you want to visit just becomes a lot easier right because gps is great outdoors it doesn't do much indoors it doesn't do anything time. indoors yeah and especially when you get that like staff worker that guides you based on things that you don't know where they are to begin with like oh you have to take a left at e booth e3 like what the booths aren't numbered like i don't know the numbers of the booths <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can't see the numbers and yeah. it's, yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment is brought to us by Salesforce platform. Visit salesforce.com slash newsletter to discover timely insights and useful tips tailored to your role. Subscribe to this channel and get more great IT and tech interviews with top industry leaders.